I love this type of problem. It requires the use of the present value and the future value. And the idea that you can't just add the 505 and the 262 and the 487 together. All your money has to be exactly at the same time. To start this problem, we're going to use a timeline. Timeline is going to be five years long because this payment occurs at five and a half years from now. So you have 505 payment. It occurs in 1.5 years. From here to here. You also have another payment of $262, which occurs in 3.5 years from here to here. In four hundred and eighty seven dollars from here all the way to here. The other thing to notice about this question is that there's three separate payments occurring at three separate times. And therefore, we're going to use three separate equations. As I said before, the money can't just be added together. You have to take into account where it's going to. We know that our money is moving to two years. So it's a like 0.5 of a year between here We also know that it's 1.5 years from here to here. And we know that it is three and a half years. From here to here. I apologize. I've made a mistake. This is T1. This is T2. And this is T3. You actually want to be keeping track of how far the money is actually moved. So I'm going to correct that. So as I said, this is T1, this is T2, and this is T3. Now, a little aside, if you're going back in time, it's present value. If you're going forward in time, it's future value. So this chunk of money is moving ahead to the focal date, so it's going to be future value. This chunk of money is moving back to the focal date, so it's going to be present value. At this point, we're cleaning up the question a little bit. We can see the schedule of payments clearly. Since we're cleaning it up a bit, let's put in a cleaner timeline as well. At this point, you've probably noticed that I've changed my shirt. Now that it's all cleaned up, let's write some equations. So for the very first one, for the very first one, it's moving forward, so it's a future value equation. And 
and the second and third payments are moving back in time, so they are present value equations. So the future value equation is PV one plus I to the power of N. Before I move on to the other two equations, let's talk about I and N. I is what we call your periodic. So if you think of a credit card, some magical credit card that's 12% per year, that's compounded monthly, you only pay 1% per month. You do the interest rate divided by the number of compounds. Similar to this question, it's going to be 6.4 divided by 4. The interest rate given to you in the question divided by how many times it's compounded per year. So the number that you put in is 0 0.0116. Now I'm going to turn off my webcam, so I'm going to go away for a moment. Lucky you. We also have to deal with the n. Because there's three separate times, because there's three separate payments, we have three different n's. Let's first deal with n1. Which is the number of compounds times how long the money's moving for. So in this case, it's 4 times 0.5. Because we've already determined that that's how long the money's moving for. So that equals 2. I've cleaned up the question. I never want to lose sight of what we're working on. We've already solved for N1, and now we have to solve for N2.